First Peter chapter one, charge. No, first Peter chapter two, charge. Well, I move fast, don't I? Went from chapter one to chapter two in two seconds. First Peter chapter two. One of the things that God has helped me with over the years and, and blessed me with was the ability to see the Bible being literal. Not just being full of symbols, even though the symbols there are, are, if you understand Bible symbols, that's amazing. But understand the literalness of the Word of God. If, if in Matthew 13 and Mark 4 and places where Jesus is teaching us about the Word being like seed, and now that scientists have peered into the germ of a seed and seen DNA and know what DNA is, he wasn't joking. Science has found out for us that DNA is like his word. It's like his book. And so we're looking at that and we're going, my goodness, he wasn't kidding, was he? His seed or his word is like seed going forth into the... We're made of dirt. It, the seed goes into the dirt and it dies in there and it's resurrected and comes out some great thing. Amen. So I, I learned to see the Bible... Even though the symbols are there, the substance is there as well. So if he says that his word is like a seed, then it's like seed. If he says that he is like a stone, he's not kidding. He's not joking. I was, uh, Jared was uh, in the office there and he was talking about the Hubble Space Telescope. And he was talking about how it's seen some of the stars. And he was just amazed at the different colors. Well, that kind of brought my mind. If you'll uh, hold your place there in First Peter and turn to uh, Ezekiel... Chapter 28, let me show you about what Lucifer looks like. This Bible's right, amen. Uh, stars are angels, according to the Bible. Now, do you believe the Bible? Every one of those dots up in the sky, guess what they are? They're ministering spirits. They're, that's what God put up there. And so, look at uh, Ezekiel 28. And uh, he's talking about the king of Tyrus, but the king of Tyrus here is the devil, it's Lucifer. Bef and this is what he appears like when he was in heaven. Verse uh, 13 of Ezekiel 28, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone was thy covering. And he mentions the sardius, the topaz. Who in here knows what topaz looks like? What does it look like? Okay. See, I'm thinking you ladies know more about this than maybe you guys do. I mean, we know limestone and sandstone and like that, right? Gravel stone. Stuff you dig. But these ladies know about those precious stones like sardius. And what is sardius? Anybody know? Must be something pretty. Sardius, topaz, and the diamond. Now, you guys know about diamonds, don't you? The barrel... The onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. There's ten of them here. Now, understand this. The devil not only is adorned with these, but that is his substance. That's what he's made of. It's who he is. And then it says, um, later on, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. He not only was given musical instruments, he was, they were made into him. And I, I couldn't understand that for a while until I was thinking about it one day and I thought, well, you know, birds, they have musical instruments in them and they play them. Crickets, they have built-in musical instruments. They make that sound by doing what? Rubbing their legs together. God gave them musical instruments. And so Lucifer, the devil, was created with tabrets and pipes built into him. He was a musical playing angel. And he was kicked out, thrown out because of his pride. All right? Because of the beauty of the stones that he was made of and the beauty of his light, pride was built up in him and he was kicked out of his place because he was a covering angel and he was cast out of that and now he's cast down here to the earth, and uh, he's still using music, by the way, to do what he does. You ponder that for a while. 
Amen? So when the Bible talks about, and now think about this. The devil, he's made of stone. Here's Christ, a stone. And when the Bible says that they have rejected the foundation stone, who did they replace him with? The devil. The devil. They're building their houses, their industry, their ministries, their lives, their families, they're building them upon the ideas and the philosophies of Satan himself instead of Jesus Christ. Imagine that. That house is going to fall. Amen? So let's go back to 1 Peter now, chapter 2. We desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. That's verse 2. If so be that you have tasted the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. We talked about that last week. How people can you can either build your house with the principles of the Bible, the stone of the Bible, the stone of the living word, Jesus Christ, or you can build it upon man's philosophies, man's ideas. Ye also as lively stones have built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed. They looked at it and they said, this is not fit for us. We don't, this is not how we want it. This is not, watch, listen to what they're saying. This is not how we want it. But it is how God wants it. But they disallowed that. They cast it aside. The same is made the head of the corner. God picked it up and said, you know what? I'll use it to build my kingdom and my house and, and my everlasting my everlasting temple. Amen. So he said, uh, he's precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling. I may talk about that tonight, and a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him that if, who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Let's look at some places in the Bible where Christ is the stone. Turn to Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. We're going to focus on verse 10, but I want to kind of get the context a little bit so we understand... Uh, what's being said here? Let's see if you can beat me there. Genesis chapter 28. The Bible says in verse 10, when, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows. Can you imagine and you think you've got it bad where you sleep. Amen. And put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Now, I can tell you, and I don't know how it is in other places on the other side of the world, but I've been to Kenya more than once. And Michael agrees with me. Compared to America, Kenyan furniture, Kenyan couches, Kenyan easy chairs, and Kenyan beds are nearly as hard as a rock. And I said that one time, and Michael said, yeah, that's it. And I said, why is that? He said, I don't know, just always been that way. So maybe for them, the idea of piling up some rocks and putting your head on it at night and sleeping, maybe that's easy for them because that's what they're used to. I don't know. But for us, we like it fluffy and puffy and marshmallowy. Amen? That's how we like it. So watch this now. W what was that stone? What were these stones that he, he laid down there? Fellas, listen to me now. Verse 12. So he dreamed. Behold, a ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Can you imagine that dream? Here's a ladder. It goes all the way up to heaven. 
And here's angels walking up and down on this ladder, just going down and up. Angels are made of fire, by the way. So he's seeing light and fire there traveling up and down that ladder. Verse 13, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land wherein thou liest to thee, I will give it and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. Four things here, by the way. Four Gospels. And uh, in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Why was he saying that? What is that phrase for? Who was it that was in Jacob? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus was in the loins of Jacob. Passed down to the twelve tribes, but particularly Judah. And from the tribe of Judah comes the Lord Jesus Christ. So in thee shall all, then in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. If they will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear you say amen? By the way, he says, in thee and in thy seed. Seed is the word of God. Are you blessed when you read the word? Does the, has the word of God blessed your family? Amen. amen, it does. Now verse 15. Behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Verse 16. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Now think about it. So watch this. Jacob rose up early in the morning and he took the stone that he had put for his pillows to set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. What was he doing? He was anointing this rock, this pillar, with oil. The Hebrew word for the anointed is Messiah. The Greek word for it is Christ. Guess who this is? This stone. Guess who it is? Okay? You say, well, now, now, Pastor, now really, it's not really the stone. It was just a picture of a stone that that's Christ. Hang on a second. In, he, in 1 Corinthians 10, there was a stone that we find that followed Israel all through the wilderness. And what did Paul say that stone was? That stone was Christ. See, I believe that he has appeared all throughout the Old Testament in different ways and in different forms, but it's still Christ. That's what I believe. Now, I may be off on that, but that's what I believe. Because he said, this is, the, he didn't say this is sort of like, think of like this is the house of God. He said, this is the house of God, and these are the gates to heaven. And what did he see? The angels ascending and descending on it. Look up there at John chapter 1. John chapter 1. This is Jesus. He saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon who? The Son of Man. That was Christ. The angels of God ascending and descending on this stone that looks like a ladder. What am I talking about? DNA. DNA looks like a ladder. God made it so that it looks like a ladder. And it's made out of phosphorus. Why is, what does the word phosphorus mean? Yes, Caleb. Phosphorus. That's the smartest boy I ever raised right there. The word phosphorus means phosphorus, right? What else does it mean? Light. Phosphorus is light bearer. They dip bullets in phosphorus for what? Tracer bullet. Come on, Army. You know this one. Phosphorus is light. Your seed, your DNA is nothing but pure light. And sugar is what it's made of. Because when they eat the seed of the word of God, when they ate the manna, what was it? Thy word is sweeter than honey to me. That's why you can only read so much of it in a day. Amen? Because you're going, whoo! 
That's too rich right there. I've got to stop right here and, and, and stomach that for a while. Amen? Amen. DNA is a living, listen, it is a living stone. Everything in this world that is living has a lighter of DNA for the book that makes them what they are. And that book, just like, your, just like your, the Bible, has two rungs, Old and New Testament, and the four things that join it together are the four Gospels that join heaven and earth together. The Old and the New together. In Jesus Christ, somebody say amen. amen. By the way, in, even in Solomon's temple, Solomon, shown this by God, being very wise, built a stairwell in the temple that went into the sanctuary and it was a winding staircase. Just like DNA. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So now, back to Genesis 28, verse 22. This stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. What did he call the place? Beth El. This church is now, has been, and forever shall be, if I have anything to say about it, will be Beth El Church. We had a pastor that wanted to change it, and I said, don't change, don't take Bethel out of it. Because he wanted to, and he was going to, and I said, don't, don't do that. So we put Bethel Fellowship or something like that on there. But it's Bethel Church. I would forever want this place to be the house of God and the gate to heaven. I want people to know that when they come in here, they're going to meet Jesus. They want to meet the real Jesus, the one of this Bible. And this can be for them the very gate to way to heaven. We come in here, we don't know, we're lost, we don't know anything about God, we don't know anything about heaven, but we think we want to be there. You pray for these that God's dealing with, that if they come here, God's going to lay it on my heart to preach to them the loving, wonderful, salvation, grace of God, and that God will bless every one of you, and you just happen to show up in a really good mood that day. Or, you just had the worst week of your life and you come in here and while God's cleaning up your slop, they just said, you know what, I'll just join them. Amen? But this is Bethel. The word Bethel, 66 times in your Bible. 66 times in the King James Bible, the word Bethel is there. This is, right here, do you see what he's saying by that? This is the house of God. This is the living stone. This is the gate to heaven, the ladder that was sent down to you from heaven where the angels, angels are light. The Bible says the entrance of thy words giveth light. When you read this book, the Holy Ghost and angels are ministering to you. The Holy Ghost is turning lights on. Who in here has had one of those deals this week where you just read the Bible and God turned the light on for you? And you shuddered, you went, Whoo! while you was crying. You know what that does? That makes your Bible precious. It makes it precious. And I don't have a problem in the world with every now and then you just going, this is my Bible. This is my best friend in the whole world. This is <laughs> the most neglected friend I've ever had in my life. <laughs> right here. This is my best friend. This is the one that tells me things that nobody else can tell me. This is the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. This is the friend that, to me, if I lost everything, I still have this. And I've asked God, don't ever take this away from me. Take, now, what did David say in Psalm 51? Take not thine Holy Spirit from me. See, he was scared, wasn't he? This was a year after his sin that Nathan the prophet came to him. And he's scared now 
that God is so angry over what he's done that he's going to take his Holy Spirit away from him. Because he saw it with Saul. Did he not? He saw what happened with Saul. And he said, Lord, please, not me. Don't take this word away from me. This is the gate to heaven. This is the living stone. Jesus asked the disciples, will you also depart from me? Because some had departed from me. And Peter said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We don't have any other place to go. This is it right here for us. Somebody say amen. So this, this stone really is alive. By the way, I didn't, I didn't mention this, but there on the bottom, left, bottom right hand there is a, like an x-ray radiographic image it is an analysis of DNA in the fact that it is a crystalline structure. You know what a crystal is, don't you? It's a stone. It is phosphorus. Phosphorus is a stone that they dug out of the ground. Right? Sugar, when it dries, you cook sugar and it dries, what does it turn to? crystal. So the two primary elements of DNA, phosphorus and, and sugar, make it so that it literally is a stone. It has the attributes of stone. It has the makeup of stone. It has the, the elements that, that, are, that come from stone. In every way, your DNA is a living stone. God got it right, didn't he? So he wasn't exaggerating. He was not just making metaphors. He was speaking the truth about it. So, you say, well, what does that do for me? What that should do is, next time you read your Bible, you ought to believe what it says. You ought to believe that God is smarter than man is, and man is just now figuring out how wondrous this universe is. Jared, he's sending that telescope out there, taking pictures of things that man has never seen before, and everything that we see should tell us God made that. God spoke that. God, and it matches His Word perfectly. The same, the same twist that DNA has is a ratio that you see those spiral galaxies? Same spiral. Same ratio in the largest things in the universe and the smallest things in the universe, DNA. We can't even see DNA. It's so small. And yet we know that it twists at a certain rate and a certain ratio. And it's the same ratio that the galaxies are turned. Same ratio that water goes down the drain in. Same ratio that waves come in and on the sea. Same ratio as the twist, the spiral that's in my ear and in the back of my hair. Huh? Yeah, my cowlick. Thank you for noticing. Lisa always says, you always miss this little patch of hair right here and it's always sticking straight up. I said, honey, I just want God to make sure he's counted those too. I don't want him to miss them. Listen, when you read this Bible, I want you to be able to believe everything that it says. Because it's true. It's never been proven wrong. And it won't be proven. This is the, the gate to heaven right here. This is the house of God. And you say, well, I thought the church was the house of God. They're the temple. But we are in Christ, aren't we? And you say, well, okay. Who in here really understands what it means to be in Christ? Does anybody understand that? Let me help you with it. Here's my understanding of it. Christ is the book, the Word. Where is your name written once you're saved? In the book of... Guess who the book of life is? You're in Him. And He is in you. Amen? John, where have you been? you asleep up there? I thought he'd be jumping out the window by now. Look at Genesis 49, 24. But his bow abode... This is um, Jacob prophesying over his twelve sons. His, his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. 
from hence, from thence is the shepherd. He calls him the stone of Israel. The stone of Israel. Exodus chapter 24. The Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of what? Stone and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach us them. The two stone tablets that Moses had in his hand, they were Jesus Christ. Because Moses comes down the first time with the two tablets. That's Christ, Old and New Testament. He comes down with the Ten Commandments. That is Christ. Israel rejects that stone. See, the foundation stone of Israel would have been the Ten Commandments. Would it not be? But they rejected it. So what did Moses do with the tablets? Cast them down and they were what? Broken. Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. That's Christ at his first coming. So God says, Moses, hew out two tables like you saw at the first and bring them up to me. Those two tables that Moses hewed out are us. Because we're going to be taken up into heaven by the lawgiver. See, what was it that brought you to the cross? It was the law. Because the law compelled you to go to the cross because you were guilty of it. So Moses brings you back up the mountain and God writes his law on your inward parts. Paul said that um, written in flat, not in tables of stone, but fleshy tables of the heart. So now that that has been written on us because we didn't come from heaven, we came from here. Moses took us up, and now we have it written in our hearts, and now we come back with Jesus the second time as the ten thousands of his saints, like the Ten Commandments, coming to rule and reign for a thousand years. That's the, two, that's the tables of stone that you see. And Israel, see the st stone of Israel, but he comes to Israel the first time and they reject him. He is literally the stone that the builders rejected. Why? They were offended at him. Joshua chapter 24, look at this. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up under the, an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, this stone shall be a witness unto us. For, look at what he says, for it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us, it shall therefore be a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. Now I just really think that unless... Joshua is crazy. He's just said, see this stone? It heard all the words that I spoke. So you know who I think that is? I don't think it's just any stone. I think it is Christ in a mystery. He's with Israel, but they don't understand who he is. He is also, what did Jesus say? He said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. He didn't say I was like the bread or think of me as the bread. He said I was the bread. So in Exodus 16, which is the 66th chapter of your Bible, the manna shows up for the first time and they call it manna because they don't know what it is. They say, what is it? They say manna. But it's Jesus. But they don't know that it's him. See, he was always there with them, wasn't he? Always. But they didn't know it. They didn't know it. He's Joseph. Standing there in front of his brethren. He knows who they are. They don't know who he is. Why? Because he's speaking a language that they don't understand. And here's Jesus on the cross going... Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. And they had no idea what he's saying. They said he's calling, to, he's calling to Elijah? What is he saying? They don't know he's quoting Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because right in Psalm 22 it says that they pierced my hands and feet and they parted my garments and cast lots from my vesture. And that's what they did to Jesus on the cross. And so Christ would have been revealed to Israel at that time, but they didn't know him. They didn't understand him. Blindness in part happened to Israel, but not for long. Fullness of the Gentiles, what do you think? Think we're about ready? 
And the Gentiles, you think their day is about done? You think Christianity is advancing and taking over, or are we losing ground? Are we being trodden under the foot of the Gentiles? Amen? 1 Samuel chapter first, uh, yeah, 1 Samuel chapter 7, turn there. Here I lay my Ebenezer. Remember that song? This is where it's from. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to the battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines. When God thunders, He speaks. And discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. Uh, by the way, in Revelation 10, the mighty angel, when he speaks, when he roars like a lion, seven thunders uttered their voices. Okay? I think this is a prefiguring of that. So the, the Lord thundered with a great thunder. In verse 11, and the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under Beth Car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shin and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Here's Jesus again. Here he is, a living stone, and he has a name. Ebenezer, the Lord, it, by the way, that stone, listen, here's the, here's the teaching of this. I, I want to forget the, the philosophy of it. He is the stone here that's always with you who will always help you. Thank you, John. You know, I, I wouldn't have a problem if you, if you found a nice flat rock somewhere and you took some paint and you painted on it Ebenezer and then you carried that around in your pocket next to your quarters and your pocket knife and whatever or put it in your purse ladies where your bills are and every now and then you pull that stone out and it says Ebenezer and you remember what that means hitherto hath the Lord helped us and use that as a reminder to every now and then remember the real stone that you have on your phone. You have a stone in your phone. Lindsay asked, that's what I'm going to call the message. So help me remember that. The stone in your phone. And you're going to read your Bible. And hitherto the Lord is going to help you in every issue of life that you're facing and that you're dealing with. Amen? See, he's not just a rock sitting there. He is a rock that is there to help you. Remember how God saved you. That is enough. Isaiah chapter 8. Turn there. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary. See, he's the sanctuary. He's the house. We are in him. But for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and taken. Bind up the testimony sealed along among my disciples. Now, I don't have time to do this tonight. Can you remember when you offended somebody as a Christian and now they will not ever darken the door of this church or any place where you are because of you. Has that ever happened? It's happened to me. I've done it. I've done it. A stone of offense. You offended somebody. You hurt them. And they said, if that's what being a Christian is, I will never do it. I'll never come again. That's a hard one to handle. 
So I'm going to pray about it next Wednesday. I might talk about that. And I will be honest. I will tell you some of my own offenses that I've given to people and been to people. And it's not pretty. And I don't like it. But I have offended people. And I have to live with that. Okay? We can be a stone of stumbling to lost people. And they'll never come to church because of us. God help us if we are. Amen? Let's stand to our feet. Father, we come before you tonight and we thank you, dear God, for Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for his presence always with us. He is the stone of help. He is the house that we dwell in. He is the gate to heaven. He is the ladder the angels ascended and descended on. He is everything, this Bible. He is, he is the law, the testimony, your governmental authority here on this earth. He is all of these things to us and much, much more. Father, I know that in the sound of my voice there will be people hearing me that will reject the stone the sure foundation stone, they will reject it. It will be an offense to them, and they'll turn away from it, and they will choose something else to base their life upon. People hearing the sound of my voice have and will do it. And Father, I pray, dear God, that you would help me. Help me, dear God, to not be the cause of the offense. Lord, I know what that's like, and I hate it. I hate it about me. I pray, Heavenly Father, God, that you would use us. Father, that you would allow us to be lively stones, building up your house. Father, that we would be something that people would be drawn to. They would say of us, that's what Christians are like. That's what I want to be like in my life. So, Father, use us in that way. Equip us, dear God. Help us to be a help to people. Help us to be their Ebenezer in their life. Father, we just want to be used and want to be something in, of, of merit in your kingdom. So, Father, we ask, God, that you be gracious to us tonight. Prepare us this week, how we're going to be, what we're going to do. Help us to follow you always, dear God, and to base everything in our lives upon you and upon your precious word. Thank you, Lord, for meeting with us tonight, for loving us and helping us to commit ourselves to you further. We love you in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.